Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-05. After the flying porpoise was secured to the dock, the ship's captain announced debarking could now occur. A flurry of sailors plowed past the party as they moved down the gangplank, headed for the brothel and the overjoyed employees. Following the Saydown seamen was the squad form of Phidias the Gnome, as he attempted to keep up with the amorous men. The rest of the party looked at each other, with the original group shrugging their shoulders. A common occurrence for Shorty? asked Grish. A look of amusement crossed the face of Harris as the ill mage smiled weakly. More times than I can count. The group discussed the situation and decided with the limited information available, they would have to learn more about this dragon problem that Red Bluffs was facing. Due to the communications issues, it was decided that Sir Omel, Harris, and Yolanda Two Blades would move through the lower city in case Phidias got himself into trouble, and Grish and Brother Stance would head up to the fortress and speak with a local bayo, or governor of the region. Yolanda the fighter suggested that they determine a base of operations as well, perhaps an inn, and the idea was seconded by Grish. The group headed down the gangplank with Harris the mage, being supported from the front and the rear until they reached solid ground. As the party reached the firm dock, Yolanda spoke with one of the men responsible for mooring their ship. After a few words in the Denali tongue, an additional pointing, Yolanda had located a suitable base. Grish spoke with the man, making threatening hand gestures, causing the man to cower and shake his head in the affirmative. Yolanda told the large man to knock it off and to stop being an ass, which garnered the reply of, I'm just trying to make sure. Lost in translation, Sir Omel asked if there was a problem. After exchanging angry looks, Yolanda pointed out that the Sunset Inn was on the second level of three in the city. It is apparently a suitable inn with, while looking at Grish, no threat of being murdered in our sleep. The trio of the original party looked at each other, and Harris weakly gasped out, Not dying in my sleep would be nice, at least for a little while. Grish then explained that Red Bluffs was carved into the volcanic core of an old volcano. The caldera would have been the dock area, and hence the very clear water in the bay. He went on to explain that niches had been cut into the rock, and the town itself is basically three levels high, with a winding trail going from the ocean side to the top of the cliffs. The group moved through a throng of people selling miscellaneous merchandise, including a horn made from a large conch shell. The merchant selling the item gave a loud blast on it that proved quite annoying to the ensemble. After a climb, the party spoke with the proprietor of the Sunset Inn and made sleeping arrangements. A quick look around showed that the establishment was of good quality and the price was suitable for the, the money they had with them. When Sir Omel and Harris purchased the quarters, they used gold coins from Calantria, which caused quite a stir. The pair asked Grish if there was a problem, and were advised that since King Pellet had pulled all the gold from the market, it was a highly, highly sought-after metal. A smug look crossed their faces as he pointed out that the two would now be considered honored guests just by having the yellow metal. After securing rooms and getting a bite to eat, each group went their separate ways to determine what the dragon problem was. The higher sections that Grish and Brother Stance passed were found to be an upper scale area with rich furnishings, an amazing view of the bay, and fewer street peddlers that were annoying. The duo made their way to the fortress where they were initially stopped by a cadre of guards. Grish spoke with them for a few moments before having to raise his voice. Either the tenor of the language or the cleric's gigantic frame caused the guards to shirk away and call for their supervisor. A short time later, a man in a colorful blue turban arrived and spoke with Grish. 
As Brother Stance looked around, he noticed the local guards looking at him and attempting to decipher if he was dangerous. He clasped his hands together and bowed gently to them. This caused a few giggles and the guards returned to watching Grish. The cleric had obviously made headway as the superior officer moved them into an inner courtyard where colorful birds and scantily clad women were present near multiple fountains. Brother Stance asked if this was normal for Denali, and Grish gave a curt, no, in response. The pair were led inside an adobe-esque building and moved to an antechamber where wine and fruit were served to them. As Omel, Harris, and Yolanda moved about the lower portions of the city, they were accosted by a variety of street peddlers plying their wares. The people mar marveled at the attire of Sir Omel, as full plate armor was rare in this land due to the heat connectivity. The knight was becoming painfully aware of his attire's problem. The solid ground agreed with Harris, whose failing constitution had begun to refresh itself after being sick on board the ship. In the lapses between vendors, Yolanda made it a point to stop and speak with some of the merchants in the area. While Omel and Harris were unfamiliar with the language, the word Draco seemed to be a reoccurring theme. Each citizen that was spoken to made sweeping gestures pointing out to the sea, and their tone was highly excited. After several such encounters, Sir Omel grew impatient. Well, he scowled. Yolanda, with a look of concern on her face, confirmed that a dragon with shiny black scales had come through Red Bluffs several weeks ago. While it had been spotted fishing in the ocean several times, it had not returned to the town. The fighter continued to explain that the fierce beast had caused a ship in the harbor to dissolve after it was spat upon. Is that all? asked Harris inquisitively. No, said Yolanda rather pointedly. Apparently the dragon is only a nuisance and it isn't a huge problem. Well, what is it? asked the pair. Pensive, as if thinking through the information gained, she paused and then explained that the people are paying very high taxes for some reason, higher than in Saydown. Sir Omel inquired if this was a problem. To wit, the female responded, yes, taxation was supposed to remain consistent through the realm. As the trio stood on the street, a very loud, I love this town, was heard, and a half-naked gnome stumbled out of the brothel with a bevy of mostly naked women surrounding him. While he spotted his associates in, and was obviously drunk, the gnome yelled out, These guys don't have gold. I'm the richest man here. All three sighed at the same time as the crowd began to surround the inebriated rogue. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.